Hey, it's Randy from UC Status. Today I'm gonna to show you the latest in the Microsoft Teams rooms on Android. Uh, it's update one for calendar year 2023. It's a mouthful, I know. I do have a blog post on this. I'll put a link in the description, of course, and I'm gonna embed this video in the blog post as well, so a few chances to actually see it. Right, so what's new with update one? Well, actually quite a lot. This is probably Microsoft's biggest update for Android uh, Teams rooms in forever, if not always. So um, it's not just you know improvements and things, this time it's actually features. And it's a lot of stuff that's been missing uh, for the longest time. Again, if you go back a year or so ago, Android was definitely the poor cousin when it came to Teams rooms. Now Microsoft is definitely showing some love for the fastest growing Teams room category. So first up, you can see that I've got some icons on the screen. I've got a meet button whiteboard, which came in December. I call this the walk up and use. So if I press on that, it opens up a blank Microsoft whiteboard. And again, I can grab a pen and start drawing or whatever. So this is actually just walk up and use. It's kind of a disposable whiteboard as such. Uh, effectively, what happens is if I were to start drawing on this and ideating in the room, this isn't sharing into a Teams meeting or anything. This is just to the front of room display. So as I stop the whiteboard, that is gone. That's, that content is erased and completely gone. There's no way to share this or anything. There's no way to take a screenshot or anything. Hopefully, Microsoft will add that over time. The ability to maybe email it around or save it to a channel or something like that. But what, what you can also do is from here, I can actually start a meeting from the whiteboard. It's going to bring up the camera, of course, very briefly, and then it's going to start that whiteboard. And it takes me back into the into the whiteboard that I was already in. So if I were to draw at idle um, and then start a whiteboard from there, then from here I can actually just start calling people, calling other rooms or out other people, that sort of thing. So a nice kind of workflow really for uh, starting to ideate in the room and then escalate that to a meeting and then bring in people from outside. Kind of a great feature really. Uh, a share button. Uh, this is new, join with a meeting ID. So this was previously only Windows. Uh, now you can actually just click on join with an ID, enter the ID, passcode, and press join meeting, and you're in. And that's something that they've been asking for for quite a long time. Uh, of course, there's no ability to join a Zoom meeting from, from an ID and passcode, but that's on Windows now, so I'd expect that to come to Android at some point in the future. Some of the other things that I would want to call out, I'll actually just go into settings and show you there. All right, so for this, you actually have to go into Teams admin settings. Right, a few things to call out. So let's just go through all of them. We've got calling here. You've not actually got the ability to accept a meeting invite automatically. That's nothing new. It's been around for a little while. You can also start video automatically. So I'm just going to set those on. Next, under general. So these are some new things. Enable touchscreen controls. So that was uh, around in December or so. That is basically if you've got a touch console in the room, generally what happens is when you plug in that touch console, the, the controls for meetings and actually just at idle actually move from the front room display over to the touch console. Well, actually enabling the touchscreen control experience actually makes them so that they're available on both. So that's when the, the room is idle, the, the icons that I was just scrolling through a second ago on the home screen, but also when you're in a meeting, and I'll show you that in a second. So again, this is the front of room display that I'm actually showing here. The touch console I've actually just switched off so I can actually show you everything uh, just on this feed without having to have a camera on the touch console, etc. Of course, you can set the wallpaper in here. So this next one is something I'd like to call out as one of my favorite things. is actually the ability to control when you share into the room. So I've actually got this turned off. That's for a couple of good reasons. So if you think about the, uh, the old behavior, as soon as you plugged in your laptop, it would project through to the front room display. You could unshare. Um, but um, it, it meant that if you've got something in the room that's permanently connected, it could be a PC in the room for, for various reasons, but it could also be one of those sharing boxes like a Barco ClickShare, Immersive, Solstice, and any number of other of those uh, sort of capture devices. So really what you want to do is be able to control when you actually see what's being shared. So with this uh, toggled off, 
when the Teams room is idle, if you plug in your laptop, um, you actually have to press the share button to initiate that uh, screen sharing. So you could actually have something permanently connected to the room and it would, um, it would only share when you want it to. Also, when you're in a meeting, this uh, does the same thing. So even if you have something permanently connected, if you go into that meeting, you actually have to open the share tray and choose HDMI share to actually get it to share. So this is a great thing. Hopefully this will come to Windows because the behavior on Windows is exactly like uh, I described a minute ago, and it's a big bugbear for people that have permanently connected devices. The next one is probably gonna be the internet's favorite is the ability to include audio over HDMI. So this is something that's been on Windows since day one, since the, the original Project Rigels. Uh, and and uh, when the Teams rooms on Android came along, there was no HDMI sharing. Uh, and, and even when there was HDMI sharing, there was no audio over HDMI. So that meant if you wanted to play a YouTube video or some sort of media with audio, it meant that it wouldn't actually share into the meeting. You'd probably hear it through the laptop speakers, but that's about it. And that was okay for people in the room, but it meant the people on the far end, you just have to kind of give some sort of audio description of what was going on. Um, and, uh, and it wasn't really popular with a lot of people. So now you actually have the ability to include audio. So for people that don't want to include audio, you can actually toggle this off. And I'll show you that when we're in a meeting, uh, when we do press sharing that, um, you can actually choose whether or not to have audio at that point in time. Now, if I go into meetings, a few other things that you might see that you don't have now. So um, these are all the same, allow to Bluetooth beaconing, proximity join, occupancy, allow to initiate a, a whiteboard. So if you do have a touch screen, actually whether or not you have a touch screen is irrelevant. If you want to be able to, from the Teams room, start a whiteboard session for people that have the ability to draw to actually participate in um, that this is actually the toggle that enables that whiteboard button that you saw on the home screen. A few other things, chat bubbles. So uh, this isn't actually showing meeting chat. That's the next item down, but the chat bubbles means that if people are actually chatting in the meeting, you'll actually see a little drop down from the top, uh, little bubbles for, uh, for, um, for, for the chat that's actually uh, going on in the meeting. The next one down is another another new one. It's the ability to show meeting chat. So that is showing the meeting chat in any layout and actually just comes in from the uh, from the right hand side of the front room display, just like on Windows. This one is another one. It's a pro feature. I should call that out is the ability to extend the room reservation. So if you've booked the room, you've booked it for an hour or something like that, but you're not quite done um, with your meeting and there's space after your meeting, you can actually from, from the touch console or the front room display, whichever you like, you can actually go in and extend that reservation until you know maybe another half an hour or something like that. Uh, and, then, um, and then carry on with the meeting as, as normal. The next one should give you a clue of another feature that's included. It is front row. So front row is sweeping the world. Everybody wants um, some sort of telepresence style experience in at least some of their rooms. And uh, it was available on Windows. The ability to um, default to front row is also something new. So if I wanted this Android room to be a front row specific room, I could actually, as soon as I go into a meeting, I'm automatically in the front row layout. So I'm not, I'm going to leave that off. Um, of course, you've got um, Cisco WebEx and uh, uh, Zoom for direct guest join, etc. A couple of really, really cool things here. Right, so I'm just going to go back to the home screen. Right, so here we go. So this next one is definitely up there, and it's uh, it was great to see this happen on Windows, is the meet button. This meet button on the previous version of Teams Rooms on Android used to just bring up a search box or something like that. It meant that you actually just had to initiate a point-to-point -point kind of call between another meeting room or another user or something like that, or just somebody's uh, SIP address, etc. Meet actually starts a meet now. So again, this was great when it finally came to the um, to Windows, but uh, it's now on Android. So I'm just going to cancel out of this box and wave to the camera before I turn off the camera. Right. So now we're in a meeting. 
what can I do? I can go into layouts and of course I can choose between gallery and front row. And in gallery, so that's the only option I've got because I've only got one uh, person in the in the meeting and that's myself. Uh, that's the only option I've got. But I can actually bring in the meeting chat. So there you go, it just toggles on and actually comes in from the right. Of course, as well, I can disable chat and then go back and go into front row. So front row, again, this is that gallery along the bottom, the content stage up here, pinned people, and of course the meeting chat. I can't configure front row or anything like that like I can do on Windows, but at least I've got front row on a Teams room. Um, I don't have the, um, what do you call it, the loop components or the raised hand bar on the left. Uh, and that's probably because I'm not in a 21 by nine layout. Um, I'll have to try and get my hands on a 21 by nine layout and see if I can actually bring in the raised hand uh, thing over here. All right, so tapping on participants just brings up the participant picker. Uh, Luke was invited, I'm, I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes. Of course, I've got still got that emoji thing, so I can put up a, a thumbs up or a heart clap or, or whatever, or I can, of course, raise my hands. If I go into the three dots just quickly, I can get out the meeting info. So if I need to give somebody the meeting ID and passcode, I can do that verbally. Um, I can extend the room reservation. So here you go. So if I bring up that. Um, I can't re uh, extend this reservation because it was an ad hoc meeting, but so that is actually expected. So that is where you would see that. Of course, I can get out the volume and I can mute myself. So next up is the share tray. So if I pop up the share tray, you can see I've got a connected device. So if I plug in something over HDMI, uh, that will actually um, share into the meeting. And of course here, because I enabled system audio in the Teams admin settings, so I can choose whether or not to include system audio at the point of share. So I can, t if I toggle that off and I'm just sharing a PowerPoint that doesn't have any audio, then it isn't going to share system audio. Uh, I can stop sharing. If I wanted to share a YouTube or something with, uh, with media, then I can choose the uh, HDMI sharing and then of course use system audio. Of course, Microsoft whiteboard actually just brings up that whiteboard. Right, so back to the home screen. So this is what happens when you actually have a reserve meeting. It shows up in the front of room display. And from here, because I've got touch controls enabled, I can actually just go ahead and press join. And again, wave to the camera. Just turn that off quickly. And then from here, of course, I can go in and start whiteboard, for instance. Actually starts the Microsoft whiteboard. Okay, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Just a reminder, it's Calendar 2023 Update 1 for Teams Rooms on Android. It's available now across all of your vendors. Uh, so go get it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.